Welcome. Let's take a look at some examples where we can use the intermediate value theorem. We are being given the polynomial for x to the third minus 6x squared plus 3x minus 2. And what we would like to do is use the intermediate value theorem to show that there is a root in the interval from 1 to 2. So let's understand what we are looking for. We want to show that there is a root of this function. Well, a root, it's another way of saying a solution. And when it comes to locations, solution will always be on the x-axis or whenever the y value is equivalent to zero. So what we would like to do, we would like to look at this polynomial and look at the interval from one to two. And we want to see, is the value of y equals zero between the interval from one to two? Well, let's see if that is happening. Well, the first thing that we should check is, do we have a continuous function? And we do, because what we are given is a polynomial. A polynomial does not have any holes or any gaps, so it is continuous. So next, what we would like to do, we would like to check the endpoints of this interval when x is equivalent to 1 and when x is equivalent to 2. Well, let's start by evaluating the x value of 1 into the polynomial that we are given. In our first evaluation, we're going to get the value of 4. In our second evaluation, we're going to get the value of negative 6. In our third evaluation, we're going to get the value of 3. And we can bring the negative 2 down. And if we combine all these values, we're going to get the value of negative 1. Let's make sense of this result. Here we are saying that within this function, when x is equivalent to 1, the y is equivalent to negative 1. So we know the function that we are given passes through the point of 1, comma, negative 1. Let's estimate this value on the graph on the right. Now let's evaluate the right-hand side of the interval when x is equivalent to 2. So let's plug in 2 into the polynomial that we are given. In our first evaluation, we're going to get 32. In our second evaluation, we're going to get negative 24. In the third evaluation, we're going to get the value of 6. And let's bring the negative 2 down. And when we combine all these values, we're going to get 12. Let's make sense of what this means. Within the given polynomial, when we plug in the value of x is equals to 2, we're going to get the y value of 12. So we know that the polynomial that we are given is going to pass through the coordinate point of 2, 12. So let's estimate that on the graph on the right. Now let's remember that we were working with a continuous function. So that means that if we connect the coordinate points of 1, negative 1, and 2, 12, we should be able to connect them without any holes and any gaps. And notice that when we try to connect them, we are guaranteed to pass through the y value of zero. We still do not know what's the shape of this connection, but we know one thing for sure, we are guaranteed to pass through the y value of zero, even if we connect it this way. Notice that in the way that I have connected it, we are passing three times through the y value of zero, or regardless of each scenario we consider, we are guaranteed to the pass through the y value of zero minimum one time. So we know that there is at least one root within the interval from one to two. So let's write down our conclusion. First, we have to acknowledge that the function was a continuous function. And then we observe that there was a y value of zero between the y values that we obtained when we evaluate the function at x equals 1 and at x equals 2. Then by the intermediate value theorem, we are guaranteed to have minimum one solution between the interval from 1 to 2.
And also in my conclusion, I didn't wrote the whole phrase intermediate value theorem. I just wrote it as IBT. That's a common abbreviation that we have. Well, one thing to notice is that the intermediate value theorem doesn't tell you what's the value of the solution. It just guarantees that there is a solution within the interval from one to two. So let's graph this function and let's verify this result. So here on the right hand side, we have the graph of the function that we are given. And notice that if we zoom in, we can identify one solution at the value of 1.22, we have a y value of zero. And this confirms the conclusion that we got from the intermediate value theorem. We were guaranteed to have a solution between the x values from one to two. Hello. If you would like to continue learning about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.